Hey, good to see you again. I'm Ben McClintock with the Tree of Liberty Society. And whenever I do a presentation or people just give me a call or, or shoot me a message, one of the most common questions that I get, what are some other books that can help me understand the things that you're talking about better? You know, what's, what's the background on some of these things? And so what I'm going to do is do a series of, of videos on a top five books on a certain subject, whether it be liberty, natural law, the Constitution, uh, conspiracy, things that are relevant to defending liberty today. So today's top five is kind of a cheat, it's kind of a six, but it's really a five, is books that the founding fathers read that guided them uh, towards creating a, a government that would maintain freedom if adhered to. So let's start with this series of books in no particular order. Book number one, Discourses on Government by Algernon Sidney. This book, uh, this particular edition is uh, published by the Liberty Fund. The thing I like a lot about uh, Discourses on Government is, first of all, this book, even before it was published, I did a video on this, even before it was published and made public, Algernon Sidney was killed for the contents of this book. It's got to be juicy stuff got to be good stuff. And uh, this book lays out principles of natural law, how government was instituted of God, what that means, what its role is, what its limits are, and how do you keep it within those limits? What do you have to do to keep government within those limits? And so it doesn't become tyrannical, it doesn't become too strong, but also doesn't become so weak that it can't uh, provide its role of, pre of preserving life, liberty, and property. Okay, let's uh, go in depth and look inside Discourses on Government by Algernon C. Okay, let's take a, a look deeper into uh, Algernon Sidney's Discourses Concerning Government. Fabulous hardcover, neat to cloth bookmark inside. Again, this is from the, the Liberty Fund. As you go through the book, the, uh, you can see the, really the, the effort that they put into making this a really quality piece. Fantastic index, help you find any topic that you're looking for. All right, here's another example. Like I said, I was kind of cheating where um, it's, it's two books, but it actually counts as one. This is Cato's Letter by uh, Sidney and Gordon, Trenchard and Gordon, sorry, uh, Trenchard and Gordon. And again, these books, Pre, uh, you know, they are before the founding fathers, before the the Constitution, before the Declaration of Independence. Uh, these are the books that uh, were read by uh, the early founders of America. This is what guided them. This is what directed them. If you don't know Cato's letters, you don't know the Constitution. If you don't know Cato's letters, you don't know the founding fathers. You don't know American independence. These books uh, guided them so much. If you read the commonplace books of Thomas Jefferson and uh, James Madison, uh, they, they reference these quite a bit. These are very much important works. And uh, these two volumes are also published by the Liberty Fund. Now let's go into these and look a little bit deeper into the contents. You can see uh, the, the similar that Liberty Fund quality that they put into all of their books. Um, we'll just look through one of them because it's basically the same on uh, on both of them, Cato's Letters, Volume 1. And then the back of Volume uh, 1 doesn't have the index, but Volume 2 has an index so that you can see, you can just start looking up uh, what things that you'd like to be able to. <clears throat> they are in circumstances and the agonies of the guilty Cain, who justly feared that every man whom he met would kill him, though there was no law then in being against murder. It was just a natural inclination to understand that if someone takes someone's life, that their life must be taken. Didn't need to be a law. Book number three we have right here. This is the Revolutionary Writings of John Adams. This is a fantastic set. Um, that is hard. The one that we have here is, is, is hardcover, and it is from the Library of America. And this is just wonderful. Just like what we have with um, Discourses on Government and Cato's Letter, uh, this one brings us a little bit more forward where, of course, we have the founding generation. 
What was it that they were writing? What was it the arguments that they were making for independence? What was the issues that they were seeing with what uh, the government was doing and why it was necessary for them to uh, defend themselves to the death if necessary for this? And so this is a very, very important work. It's a fantastic edition, really high quality edition. You know, the books like these, it's worth the investment uh, to be able to get something that is, um, you know, a, a nicer binding and something that is going to last you a long time. Um, you know, even as you read it and, and mark it up and go through it and learn what it was that the founding fathers were thinking and understanding and, and, and helping other people to understand so that they could have enough of the population to take the necessary actions to be able to uh, win their freedom from a bloody tyrant. So let's go a little, dig a little bit deeper into the, uh, this volume, this uh, printing of the revolutionary writings of John Adams. Now we have the revolutionary writings of John Adams. This edition published by the Library of America. This, is a, this, this one actually has a, a book cover also has the, I just love these cloth, these built-in cloth um, bookmarks. And again, just going through this, just wonderful. I just love the feel of the paper. And these are letters, people from his diary, from letters to Abigail, letters to other individuals. And then it also has a, not only good footnotes, but a great index as well. Makes searching for different topics much, much easier. Now, this edition, this is book number four on my list of recommended books on the principles, the foundations of liberty. And um, this is, of course, the Federalist Paper. Uh, this edition is, a, I think it's a Penguin, a mentor, oh, I'm sorry, Peng, mentor book. So this is the publisher of this paperback. Not as fancy as my other ones. I need to upgrade to a hardcover. Um, but uh, this is something that is just also a must read. Uh, this is after we've won our independence and the Articles of Confederation were looking to be strengthened and they had written the Constitution, but it had not been adopted yet and not been ratified by the necessary nine states to make it uh, nine independent states to make it binding upon those that ch uh, chose to go along with it. And what this is just a series of letters, some of them written um, in, in code names, um, and uh, in and published in newspapers all up and down the, the colonies to encourage the people to support the new constitution what did the constitution mean what was the definition what was the meaning behind general welfare it, you know if the reason why we believe certain things about the constitution is because we've never read what the founding fathers said the constitution meant words have meaning we have to look at what the meaning was when the constitution was written and so again, if we don't know the Federalist Papers, we don't know the Constitution. It's just as simple as that. All righty. Last but not least, this book right here, this is Solutions. This is the Founder's Recipe, where uh, they go through, and this is by Joe Wolverton, and um, this, this book goes through and it gets the ingredients, right? What was, kind of pulls all these things that I mentioned, plus a ton of other books, all together into an easy bite size um, volume to be able to really start to get a good grasp. You know, if we're not reading all those other books, you can even start here to get you, you know, really started and really kind of giving you a, a place to start from before you really have a place to understand kind of a lot of the stuff, concepts and ideas that are in those other volumes. And so this book I really recommend as a first step. Not only is it a great book for adults, but it's also designed to be a homeschool uh, book. Um, you go through the book as we, let's go through the book real quick and show you some of those uh, features that are in this that show that it is a fantastic book for uh, homeschooling. And it's really neat. You go through it and it has notes at the end of each section that you can, you know, an area for notes, full color, pages, little overview of who that individual is and then selections from his writings, and then a place to, to write notes. It is a great book for using for homeschooling because it goes through and it explains what's going on, what they're, how to use the book as a school book for personal, as well as for personal study. 
These are the in ingredients, right? The writings of these individuals, what the founding fathers did, uh, the books for each of those ingredients. So it's this is a, another book that as you go through it, like I said earlier, it's an introduction to these ideas and then giving you a place to go and learn more. So an another key thing in this book is the 16 essential principles of liberty. What are those essential 16 principles of liberty? Now, I think you'll be surprised that um, none of these books are probably on the list of things that uh, you've read before, not on the typical list of individuals that are uh, looking into liberty, um, but uh, I, I really believe that those other books that you know are a little more well-known um, fall, I'm not going to name names, but uh, some of them fall short. Some of the ones that you're thinking of might not be on that list, but uh, I believe that these are the top five, starting with the founder's recipe to uh, really get you on the path to understanding and then applying the principles of liberty so that we can restore what it was that God intended us to have, the liberty that he gave us and that no, no one else has the authority or the right to take away from us. And we just need to know these key principles that not only the key principles of liberty, but those key fundamentals of how to preserve and how to restore lost liberty. I'm Ben McClintock from the Tree of Liberty Society. I'll see you next time.